with Aaron Rocklin of uh, Soccer Assist, a great nonprofit here in town, and Brian Ching. You might remember him from the Houston Dynamo, recently retired as all-time leading scorer, so plenty of street cred there. Both of you guys coming together this weekend for a great cause. There's such a good synergy here. I guess we'll start with you, Aaron. Can you talk, talk to us about Soccer Assist and what, you know, how it came, you know, Tell us about it. Sure. Well, thanks for the opportunity to uh, share our story. Uh, briefly, yes, we are a new nonprofit. We launched about four months ago. Had a big launch party in La Zona Rosa. Had Christine Lilly there. Um, and in short, our mission is really to increase access for boys and girls aged 7 and 11 into the beautiful game here in Austin. Mm -hmm. And in particular, we want to increase opportunity for those high visibility, often very um, expensive leagues for those kids that have a lot of passion but not the means to reach it. Yeah, and that's where you come in, because here you are doing the same type of thing with Helm Soccer out on the West Coast. Well, you're not on the West Coast, but uh, between you, Landon Donovan, Stuart Holden, some soccer greats coming together to give back. What, why? You know, I think one of the things is when we retire, we're like, hmm, what are we going to do? Uh, and we're like, hey, you know, let's get together and let's give back. And uh, so we decided that we wanted to create a company that goes out and does soccer camps and kind of teaches the life, life lessons that we've kind of learned throughout soccer and, and what we feel it made us successful and the, the traits. And so HELM actually is a, like an acronym, so it's humility, excellence, leadership, and motivation. You know, and we think those are keys to success in any part, you know, because we know a lot of the kids that we're going to go out and do camps for uh, aren't going to become professional soccer players. So we want to give a broader message and, and give them... Uh, a way where they can succeed and so one of our big missions was to be able to go into these cities and partner with great charities you know and we did a little bit of research and uh, soccer assist kit popped up when we were coming here to Austin and we we're like wow this is a no-brainer this is a organization that wants to go out and give more kids underprivileged kids an opportunity just to play the game mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was one of those things like, all right, we're on board. Yeah. <laughs> Which is music to you. Yeah, well, when I got that call from their representative and, they t and she told me who they were working with, I was like, <laughs> uh, am I dreaming here? Yeah. This is perfect. And uh, I have great respect for all three of these players. Yeah. But when I heard that, what they're trying to do, the, the respect as, as humans really increased for me. For sure. And, you know, when you have a, a Landon Donovan in this mix, I mean, I, I was trying to think of his title Best U.S. soccer player. Ever. I mean, yeah. it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy title. Do you find that the attention, uh, whether it's a kid, whether it's an adult ready to, to give to the cause, do you find that the ears are a little more open when you guys are talking? Yeah, I definitely think so. I, you know, obviously I think he's the big draw. He's the best soccer player that's ever kind of played for our country. And so, um, you know, we were roommates for a long time, so we developed this relationship, and him and Stu were roommates, and me and Stu were roommates. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how we all got together. Uh, and... You know, I think when we were all kind of, well, I don't think Stu's quite retired yet, but, um, you know, he's taking a break. So we all just thought, hey, you know, this is a great way to go out, give back to the community, uh, and, and kind of travel and, and get that kind of locker room atmosphere again, yeah. you know, yeah. which, which we miss when you retire. I think that's the thing we miss the most. So, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a fun way for us to, to give back, and, you know, we... Um, you know, we're really looking forward to doing this more often, you know, yeah. with, with more charities across the entire country. Tonight's event, uh, it seems like it's going to be a pretty cool hang, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. over the Waller Ballroom with, you know, these guys. What, what should people expect tonight if they still have time to come out? Well, there might be about an hour uh, or so by the time this airs that mm -hmm. you can uh, purchase a ticket. You can see the link from our website, soccerassist.org. Mm -hmm. And basically, I think it's going to be a really unique event. I mean, it's going to start as, a, as kind of a social with appetizers and drinks, and then we're going to move it into a, a Q&A kind of press conference format where audience members, children and adults, can submit questions and potentially get to ask them right there. Yeah. And then in the last 40 minutes or so, maybe half hour, we'll be able to take pictures behind a beautiful step and repeat with our great sponsors. So yeah. we're excited about it. And it's a really kind of special space, Waller Ballroom, and... Uh, it's, it's going to be tough to top the PGI Studios, but with these guys, I think we might do so. For sure. Uh, you know, and, and bringing it out a little bit, both programs doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's, it's obviously for the kids to, to keep this, this sport from being exclusive, mm -hmm. from making it inclusive. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, do you almost feel like you're, you're helping grow this sport that's been good to both of you? Yeah, I, mean, I think soccer's been the number one youth sport in the country for a long time, you know, but I think 
with the rise of the MLS and the World Cup and, and whatnot, soccer seems to be growing. It has been growing over the past 20 years, and the MLS has really kind of helped that uh, accelerate, you know, and I think we're kind of getting out on the front end and, and kind of trying to help spread that uh, message that, uh, you know, and, and the inclusiveness of soccer even more than we already have. Yeah, have you found that the spike that comes with the women doing their thing at the, at the World Cup mm -hmm. and the Gold Cup followed right after? Do you, you, you sense yeah. that there is a... I mean, it seems like... Well, that's many, another story. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I guess it's been so visible. This summer really has been a summer yeah, of soccer. Huge. And like. last year, the USA really did nicely represent in the World Cup. Right. And then the Olympics are right around the corner. So mm -hmm. have you found that for when you're, when you're dealing with youth that, like, there, that it piques interest a little bit more? Well, absolutely I have. But just to add on to the great question you answered, I mean, I think this is a story some not only about inclusiveness, including people or kids that can't afford to play, but it also really enriches the lives and soccer experiences of those kids that can. In fact, that's kind of part of our story is as a family yeah. and seeing my, my son Dylan, you know, become friends with these kids that mm -hmm. otherwise he wouldn't have yep. is very powerful, maybe more so than the game. Yeah. And then at the bigger picture, absolutely, I think it relates to the, the future growth of American soccer is uncovering soccer stars that otherwise couldn't afford to be seen. Right. In fact, Correct me if you feel differently. I mean, that's where this country really differs some from the soccer training in, let's say, Argentina, Brazil, sure. et cetera, where they take kids that, you know, are very impoverished in some area but skilled. Yeah. Here, and not only just soccer, you often have to have money to be in those top leagues to be able to be identified, with some exceptions. Right. Do you, do you see, Brian, you know, that's always the, the debate at the roundtable is will we ever be a, you know, a force in soccer, in men's soccer. We're obviously getting it done on the women's side, but what do you think? You're the perfect guy to ask. Yeah, I, I think we'll win the World Cup eventually. You know, it's just a matter of time. And when you look at the, the growth of soccer over the past, well, just since I've been playing, uh, you know, well, since I've been playing professionally, you saw a league that had 10 teams, and now we're at 20 teams. You know, and, and like I said, soccer is the number one new sport. But now there's an avenue for a lot of kids to grow up to stick in soccer and yeah. play. And so we're starting to get some of our best athletes staying in soccer, especially because it's more visible now. It's all over the place. So you're getting some of the best athletes, you know, and, and America has some of the best athletes yeah. in, in the world when, you know, you just look at track and field, you know, it's a pure athletic sport. And, and we, you know, win medals left Got and it. right and yeah. all that. So, you know, I think the facilities here uh, in, in the United States as a whole provide more kids with opportunities to become better athletes and I think that you know with the popularity of soccer growing, gaining and gaining you're gonna see a lot more talented players and you know I've seen it now you know I think when I was coming through the ranks some of the best soccer players were in their you know 30s you know lower 30s but now you're seeing kids on the national team there in their 18s you know still in college uh, so you're seeing that we're getting better at a younger age, and, and, and that's just a progression. And as that progression goes further, uh, I mean, you just look at it from a number standpoint. We, we're going to win the World Cup at some point. It's just a matter of, of uh, statistics. Sure. And, and that was your U.S. national side. As a, as a what, 12-year MLS vet, yeah. i got to ask you this. Is Austin MLS material? What do you think? That's been a, a hot topic around here. Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, look, they, they have the Aztecs already. You know, there's, there's a passion uh, for a team here. Um, you know, we're actually going to go out to uh, the Austin Aztecs, who also have a foundation, and, and help uh, them raise money at their game this Saturday. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. But, um, you know, I think there's no major professional sports team here right now. And I think if, you know, soccer were to get in, uh, build a stadium, uh, I definitely think that uh, they would have a great following. I mean, you look at all the expansion teams now that the LMLS is bringing in, the, uh, the amount of attention and the amount of fan bases and, and the amount of excitement that it creates in, in every one of these cities is, is tremendous. And, uh, you know, I think soccer is kind of on that verge of, of exploding here. Cool. Lastly, um, we, we teed up tonight's event, but what about the weekend? This goes beyond tonight obviously mm -hmm. well we got a lot of great things going on we got a we have a tournament scheduled august 22nd and 23rd at soccer zone who's a soccer zone south austin mm -hmm. and you can look on the website for more information about that but i'm really excited this saturday august 1st at peace park we're giving away 45 pairs of brand new soccer cleats to youth from millennium soccer club and lone star as well as westlake and um, that's money provided through our partnership with uh, MLS Works 
and FC Dallas. And so it's just be a really kind of heartwarming event. We're giving away soccer balls and cleats, and uh, those kids like can't wait, and their families. Awesome. So that's what we'll be doing this weekend. The link one more time? Soccerassist.org. Please check it out. All right. Thanks, guys, for the time. Thanks, Thanks. No problem. Thank you.